In the last video, we derived how the average value of u over the surface of a sphere varies as the radius of the sphere changes. That's this quantity over here. So the rate of change of the average of u as a function of the radius of the sphere is related to a volume integral of the Laplacian divided by the surface area of that sphere. In this video, we'll uh, evaluate this integral approximately to provide a final interpretation of what this Laplacian operator uh, means, what it's, what it's telling us. And we'll do that by uh, supposing that the sphere, the radius of the sphere is very small. So the radius of the sphere tends to zero in such a way that the Laplacian of u is approximately given by its value at the center of the sphere. So if you recall, we we're considering a point P and looking at a sphere about this point. And this sphere had some radius r. So what we're doing is shrinking this radius down to just the immediate neighborhood of point P. So we can take uh, over the new domain, over this very, very small sphere, we can take uh, the Laplacian of u as being essentially uh, a constant. And what that lets us do is take out this quantity from the integral. And we're just left with essentially the volume of this very small sphere. Okay, so we'll say uh, R tends to some very small value, epsilon. So this, if we evaluate the volume of the sphere. We have our epsilon square here. And the volume. So these terms go away. And we're left with, with this. Okay, and just for generality, we're going to change this epsilon back uh, to capital R, uh, just to uh, for uh, for convenience. Okay, but you should still think of this capital R as being a very small quantity. And then what we can do, so what we have essentially is as you vary the radius of the sphere, that's related to uh, about some point P that's related to the value of the Laplacian at that point times the radius of the sphere divided by three. And what we can do then is integrate both sides. Okay. 
Okay, so we're integrating with respect to R to get rid of this derivative. This continues to be very small over the change of radius that we're considering. So we can pull that quantity out of the integral. And we're left with this. And evaluating this is straightforward. You get R squared over six. The Laplacian of U at the center of our sphere over here at point P plus an integration constant. And the way that we're going to determine the value of this integration constant is to say that uh, our function U in general at the center of the sphere is non-zero. at the center of the sphere, uh, we'll say u has some non-zero value in general, which we'll call u center. And this will be our, uh, our integration constant. So it's just an extra term where even if this was a constant, you would still get a non-zero average value. So this means that the average value of u over the sphere is equal to this term that we got from the integral plus something to take into account the value of u at the center of our sphere. And if you isolate for the Laplacian, then You get the Laplacian of u at the center of a sphere. So at this point P that we were considering, that's equal to essentially a, a numerical factor times the difference between the average value of u over that sphere and the value of u at the center of that sphere. So this is our interpretation for the Laplacian. It tells you the difference between the value of u at some point p, u center, and the average value of u in the neighborhood of that point, in this case, over the sphere, over a sphere about that point. And uh, in particular, if the Laplacian is equal to zero, that tells you that the average value of u about some point is equal to the value of u uh, at that point. And this is what's used in some numerical methods for solving Laplace's equation, such as the, the Jacobi method. Okay, so by doing some algebraic gymnastics, we've developed a uh, an interpretation of what this Laplacian operator that occurs in so many partial differential equations in physics actually means. Uh, so clearly the, the, the amount that a quantity at some point differs from its neighboring uh, values over the average of its neighboring values tells you how that quantity will evolve over space and time. <laughs>